What's up YouTube, this is JP Panther, back on a video, and today's video is actually going to be, it's actually going to be a Phantom Menace review, be, well, a Phantom Menace type video, because I saw this article on the Washington Post, and it shows you that the Star Wars, you know, the Phantom Menace um, YouTube group, or whatever it is, or the hashtag, or whatever, whatever they want to call themselves, it seems like they're getting, getting more popular, or getting more recognition, because the Washington Post, they just did a whole article about them, calling them right wing and stuff like that. And again, we're going to read the article. And again, I will link the article in the description box down below so you guys can check it out. I'm not going to read every single thing about it because it's long as hell and it's just like keeps going on and on. But we're going to read the most important stuff. So <clears throat> this comes from the Washington Post. It says the last Star Wars film satisfies the right wing with the left start trolling and blah, blah, blah. Again, I'm just going to read the most important stuff and I will give you my thoughts and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> it says, after the Last Jedi online campaign took issues with the film's feminism, left, 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 leftism, and diverse cast, the right wing critique was um, named as the Phantom Menace, even though Lucasfilm uses the name. I'm like, they use the Phantom Menace, Phantom Menace, not the Phantom Menace, whatever. And yet, The Last Jedi became a business. Popular anti-Last Jedi videos on YouTube have made millions of hits, translating to tens of thousands of dollars for their creators. Right-wing personality sells Phantom Menace apparels, and entrepreneurs raise 50000 in seed money for the anti-Last Jedi comic book, and almost 10000 for a multi-volume of the Phantom Menace history. Who is this film for? Uh, the Rise of Skywalker apologized to The Last Jedi haters by top critic reviews uh, damn this is long as hell man a smaller fandom platform the most visual star wars fan media is made by white men for example until 2008 the star wars website link that included um link to fan podcast which i uh collected for past research 30 of the 56 shows had male hosts, only one had a person of color. I mean, why did you say black people? Why do you say person of color? That's really offensive as hell. Some of these fan media outlets supported the Last Jedi backlash. For example, Rebel Force, Radio One of the oldest outlets provided to cater to right wing audience. Fans who felt silent by the Last Jedi politics will have a compatible platform. Female, non-white, LBGT fans control fewer fan outlets. They also experience more online harassment than from encouraging with the larger fandom. And also, here's the thing, right? There is people that are, and a lot of people don't understand, like, even with the Phantom Menace. The problem with the Phantom Menace, and I kind of want to talk to you guys about this as well while I read a lot of stuff. The problem with the Phantom Menace, the way they talk is that, I'm, and the thing is, I watch some of the Jeremy, Jer uh, Jeremy Johns and Geeks and Gamers, whatever. The problem is, is that, the, the problem with the, the Phantom Menace, and hopefully one day I get to talk to them, whatever. The problem is the Phantom Menace, when they talk, they really... And again, there's other people who disagree with them politically. There's some that are left who don't like The Last Jedi and stuff like that. The problem is the, the Phantom Menace, they give off an impression. And this is when I watch their videos. Is that like, for example, Marvel, right? Or even Star Wars. When, when you had all these franchises that, or even James Bond, where they cater to most... Where most of the characters were mostly all white dudes, but then when you start having like Black Panther, Captain Marvel, or like the cat, the the cast start being a lot more diverse. That's when people, I guess, from the outside, like the Washington Post and all these left wing uh, side, whatever, they view them as like kind of anything that isn't white, they're considered racist because the way they talk, I don't know, the way the Phantom Menace talk, it seems like anything that's it's kind of like I was trying to explain it the best way I can. If it's, um, trying to explain this the best way I can, the problem is when they talk, they sound like anytime, if it isn't anything that isn't a white, anything that's a white, that is, isn't, sorry, anything that isn't a white dude, they're ready to bash on, like Captain Marvel, Black Panther, but when it's anything that's like Luke or James Bond or like any of these white male characters, they give them a pass. Like even like the Marvel movies, I watched some of their like reviews, reviews, whatever, when they had like Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, they don't really bash them the way they do with Black Panther, Captain Marvel, or Ray, or all these other um, characters that aren't white male or white dudes, whatever. They have a different type of energy and a different type of response. So from someone from the outside looking in, they're like, okay, you guys are bashing anything that doesn't have a white man leading. And that's their perception of the fandom menace because 
the way they talk, they sound very like alt right, uh, super right leaning. That I'm saying, I'm just talking about from their first impression. That's just what it is. Maybe they're not like that, but the way they talk, they always sound like you know they're always bashing, criticizing something that isn't a white dude. You feel me? It's kind of like I gotta make my superheroes or my Star Wars and keep it as white as possible. It's kind of like make America great again really means make America white again. I want to keep my franchise as white as possible. That's the impression that they give off of. You feel me? I'm just trying to tell you what it is. Hopefully this stuff makes sense. Um, less powerful groups of the fandoms are exceptionally like to practice transformation fandom, creating new things rather than trying to control the direction of official Star Wars media. For example, fans disappointed with the last uh, the Rise of Skywalker created Fix Their Art and charity fundraisers, memes celebrating Last Jedi, and just this is articles long as hell, man. Uh, the right wing Last Jedi content was helped along by non Star Wars media as well, dismantling with Last Jedi of the uh, coverage of right wing cultural grievances and outlets as the Federalist National Review by alt right influence, including Ben Shapiro, Jack. I don't know who this is. Uh, websites uh, specializing in white wing pop culture, uh, expanding that's their Star Wars covers to capture anti Last Jedi audiences. These platforms also help white wing Star Wars outlet grow a new audience. And it talks about on and on. And again, this article is long as hell, man. And it says the backlash ends outrage against the last Star Wars has not matched the campaign against the last Jedi. Given the middle success of the Rise of Skywalker, it's possible that the most viewers prefer the last Jedi. However, the Rise of Skywalker is perceived as a film that's less powerful fans in an effort to please conservative fans. That may be enough to hold backlash in check. Again, the thing is long as hell. And again, I'm reading this article, and I get where they're coming from, but the problem is, is that you can't just brand everybody in the Phantom Menace as an alt-right conservative and things like that. I'm just saying, like, not if I mean, there's black people that have the, they have the Dark Council, they got Abu Naz, they got, was it, uh, uh, the Candy, whatever. They, they have other, they have all, Star, all that Star Wars girl stuff like that. Like, they have other people in the fandom. The problem is, is that they really just want to pay attention to the main, uh, white male uh, YouTubers that are part of the Phantom Menace because they're the ones that will get the most attention and the most clicks. And also they don't fit with the political narrative. So I think that's one of the reason why they don't call out everybody in the Phantom Menace. But that's just my personal opinion. But the way the Phantom Menace is, it just seems like you guys are getting the geeks and gamers and all of them, the other YouTubers, they're getting more and more popular. They're getting a lot more uh, clout, I guess. And I remember they, you know, and also I watched, you know, some of their live stream and stuff like that. They're like, yo, we were a small a vocal minorities and now we're responsible of taking down a billion dollar uh, uh, blockbuster uh, movie franchise. So it shows you that they have some type of power or influence. But you got to realize that YouTube is just a bubble. It doesn't represent the whole world. And I think the media people, they also fall crap too because... Um, they don't understand that they don't represent everybody as like the general audience. They represent like the bubble of YouTube. They represent a certain section of the population. They don't represent the whole population. Now again, in my personal opinion, the Phantom Menace, they could kind of, in all these other YouTubers, they could kind of go after Star Wars because Star Wars has a lot more of a... There's, there's a lot more person. There's more personal stuff with uh, Star Wars than this with Marvel. Because with Marvel, they're going. Marvel, they're letting you know we're going woke. We don't care. We have a very progressive, diverse audience. They're dealing with superheroes. is a lot different. Star Wars, you're dealing with Democrats and Republicans killing each other, becoming space wizards, and getting into a position of power. And there's a lot more political lore and religion and stuff like that. There's a lot more deeper meaning with Star Wars than it is with superheroes. Superheroes pretty much, at least with Marvel, the hero goes through some hardships and rise up and he beat the villain. There's not, you know, after that, it's not that complicated to figure out. Star Wars is just a lot more story, a lot more things you could take with the franchise than it is with Marvel. So, and also the problem, Star Wars is not as protected like Marvel, even though it's owned by the same companies. So they're ready to kind of bash and attack it a lot harder than it is with Marvel. Because with Marvel, if you really want to be honest, like, they're not going to be able to pull all this crap with Marvel because, um, 
Scarlett, like, you know what I mean? They're not going to pull the same thing like they did with Captain Marvel Brie Larson because Scarlett Johansson knows how to handle herself and really understands how to deal with PR and stuff like that. Uh, the Eternals, you guys don't know about the Eternals, so you can't bitch about it. So that's another thing as well. Shang-Chi comes out next year. You guys don't know about him, so no one's going to complain about it. Now, Star Wars, you guys can do it because you guys have read the books and the EU and stuff like that. So there's a lot more nitpicking and cherry picking that you guys can do with Star Wars than it is with Marvel. So, again, with the Phantom Menace, you guys are getting popular. I guess you're getting more recognition because J.J. and Lucasfilm and, I guess, Star Wars Celebration and all that stuff, they recognize you. And it shows you you guys are getting a lot more clout and a lot more power. But just keep it in mind that the Phantom Menace or just the groups in general, you guys only represent a bubble of the YouTube community. You guys don't represent... You don't represent the whole general public. You represent the YouTube bubble of the internet, not the world. That's really it, guys. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me what you guys think about the Phantom Menace being popular. Do you think the Washington Post is going too crazy and out of control with it let me know in the comment section below uh rate and like the video and subscribe make sure you subscribe to the channel peace and have a great day and take care